How do you defend that Christians believe that Jesus is the only way to God? Well, in the first place, I would defend this by saying that there is no solution to human sin apart from the atoning death of Christ. It's very clear in the New Testament that all persons are sinful and separated from God, morally guilty before him, and in need of his forgiveness. And that Christ's death on the cross is God's solution to human sin and estrangement from God. So apart from the cross of Christ, there just isn't any provision for man's sin, for, for atonement right. and, for, and reconciliation. Now, why think that Christ's sacrificial death is efficacious for human sin? Well, his resurrection from the dead. He was crucified because he claimed to be God's anointed and the herald of the kingdom of God into human history. And God's raising Jesus of Nazareth from the dead vindicates in a public and unequivocal way those allegedly blasphemous claims for which he was crucified. If this man has been raised from the dead, then the God that he had allegedly blasphemed has publicly committed himself to him and vindicated those radical claims. And so it is on the basis of the evidence of the resurrection that we can believe in the efficacy of Christ's atoning death. And for that reason, I believe that Christ and Christ alone is the means of salvation. Now, that raises then further difficult theological questions, namely, well, what about those then who have never heard of Christ? How are they going to be judged? It would be unfair for God to judge them for not having placed their faith in Christ when they've never heard of Christ. And God is fair. So what do you do with those people? And it seems to me that the answer of the New Testament is that God judges people on the basis of the light that they have. That those who have only the light of God's general revelation in nature and conscience will be judged on the basis of their response to that. Those who have the light of his special revelation and the gospel will be judged on the basis of their response to that. Now that doesn't mean that anyone can be saved apart from the atoning death of Christ. It just means that it would be possible that someone could be a beneficiary of Christ's atoning death without having a conscious knowledge of Christ. He would be like a person who suddenly discovers that he is a benefactor, um, uh, or he is in the will, rather, of some rich uncle that he never knew that he had, and is suddenly heir to a huge fortune, even though he never knew he had this rich uncle. Uh, a person could be a beneficiary of Christ's atoning death without having a conscious knowledge of Christ. And there are certain people in the Old Testament like this. Job, for example, had no knowledge of Christ. He wasn't even an Israelite. He wasn't even a member of the Abrahamic covenant. And yet, very clearly, Job had a personal relationship with God. So it seems to me that God um, will judge people on the basis of their response to the light that they have. Um, and that uh, anyone who is saved will be saved only through Christ's atoning death. Now, much, much more could be said about this. And if you look at, for example, um, my book On Guard, the final chapter in that book wrestles in even greater depth with this question of uh, what I call Christian particularism as opposed to religious pluralism. But I think perhaps this is en enough has been said to say why I think that Christ alone is the means of salvation and why this does no injustice uh, to any human being in the world in terms of the availability of salvation and the benefits of Christ's death to that person. What about the, the verses in Scripture that say you have to confess with your mouth, believe in your heart, Jesus is Lord, then you will be saved? What do you well, mean? what that verse says in Romans is if you believe in your heart, uh, or if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart 
that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. That states a sufficient condition of salvation, not a necessary condition, okay. right? It says, if you do these things, you will be saved. And that's true. But Job didn't do those things. Moses didn't do those things. So that's not a necessary condition. That's a sufficient condition. 